A higher level concept that further explores the ideas of the balance of payment, specifically the current account and specifically deficits, um, is what we call the Marshall Lerner condition. This is saying that if a currency is depreciating, well, it's answering the question of will the current account deficit reduce? So the formula for it is PED of exports added to the PED of imports. If that's greater than one, then we say that the Marshall Lerner condition is satisfied or true or whatever. If the Marshall Lerner condition, oftentimes we'll just say the MLC, if it is satisfied, then what that means is that depreciating the currency will make the current account deficit reduce. That is, the current account will get closer to being balanced. Keep in mind when we look at the current account, if we have a current account deficit, what that means is the value of exports is less than the value of imports. So a reduction in the current account deficit would mean that X needs to grow, M needs to shrink, or probably some combination of the two of those. But the result will be that the size of X will be closer in size to the size of M. Maybe not equal to it or greater than it, but the difference between the two will be less. For our example today, we're going to look at Romania. Romania has a current account deficit right now, according to the CIA World Factbook in 2014, I guess, of uh, $868 million. We're going to assume they do most of their trade with the Eurozone. Uh, that's not necessarily true, and it's not even that necessary for most of what we're going to say, but we do need a specific place for one example, the middle one here. So, when we look at the PED of imports, which is what we're going to look at first, remember, this is the PED of all goods that Romania imports from the outside world. And again, this is from the Eurozone or anywhere else. So, all the things that Romania brings in, we're going to try to figure out, we we're saying, okay, this is the price elasticity demand of those things. So, their currency is uh, the Romanian LU, L-E-U, but the symbol is R-O-N for some reason. Well, let's get rid of this first. The top half of this curve, this demand curve for imports, remember, this is really simple logic. Um, remember, this is the point of unit elasticity, the middle point. Therefore, all the values above here are one. So it by itself would make the Marshall, Marshall Lerner condition true. Remember, you can't have negative PED values. We're assuming that you're absolute valuing everything. So. That's easy, and again, the thought is that, well, if your imports are going to increase, well, then what that means is that we're going to go away from this middle point. Remember, the middle point is where the, uh, where the area, in this case, the value of imports, is maximized. So moving away from that is, of course, going to shrink M. Likewise, for exports, these are prices expressed in euros, so now these are Europeans buying, or people in the eurozone, buying things from Romania. Well, for them, prices are going to decrease as a result of the depreciation. Therefore, if prices decreases, they'll be moving down the demand curve. That's why these arrows go the opposite way. And again, the top half is very simple. If we're moving towards the middle point, then what that means is the value of X would be growing, and that's going to kind of be the end of the story. So again, any values here would be greater than 1, and the Marshall Lerner condition might be true. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute, what if we have a very little change here, so exports grow by a little bit, but we have a very big change in this lower half down here, so it would, uh, imports would grow by even more, wouldn't that make the current account deficit greater? Well, that's kind of the problem that we're studying here today. And we'll figure out that your assumption here, or that assumption here, that this is going to be a small change, is going to be false. Okay. Um, so the top halves aren't real consequential. Let's look at the bottom halves instead. Now remember here, as we're getting closer and closer and closer to the midpoint, this value would grow. And as we get further and fur further from the midpoint, this value would shrink. Well, imports is the value that we want to shrink, so that's going the wrong way. And exports is the value we want to grow, so that's going the wrong way. So the question is, well, how is it that two values that could be in here, because for example, I could have an export uh, PED of 0.5 and an import PED of 0.6, and those two added together would be greater than one, and it doesn't seem like that should reduce the current account deficit, but it will. So, a couple things we've got to keep in mind. 
First of all, keep in mind that changes in the lower half of the curve, that is, changes that occur further from the midpoint, are going to be much more substantial. So change A here, where we go from a point pretty far down the demand curve, up a little bit, that's going to lead to a very significant change in M. So M, if, if that was M, M would grow by a lot. But because here at B, uh, because we're closer to this maximum point already, well, what that means is that, well, yeah, it's going to increase, but it's not going to increase by a whole lot. Uh, I just remember, that's why I have this to remind myself, I have another video about this. If you want to click right there, I've got it linked. And uh, the other video goes into this math with a bit more detail if you're stuck on it. So, assuming that A is going to make M change by a lot, and B would make M change by a little bit, or increase by a little bit, that's our first thing that we need to clear up. Okay? The second thing we need to clear up is over here at point C, and by the same logic that we just said, it would seem that X would decrease, but because it's pretty close to the midpoint, it's only going to increase by a little bit. That's true if you're thinking about the money that Eurozone members are spending. But we don't actually care about the money they're spending, we care about the money, the Lou, the Romanian Lou, coming into Romania. So, let's go back here and let's say we have B, which is 0.9, I said, added to C, which is another 0.9, therefore the two of them together are 1.8. And as I already said, it would seem like that would make imports grow, which is bad, and this would make exports shrink, which is bad. And it's that right there that is the error in thinking. So like I said, this is euros being spent, but remember, these get converted into Romanian lu. And the question is, what's going to happen to the Romanian current account? And of course, they're counting up Romanian lu, not euros. So, if that's true, we can assume the price in Romania hasn't changed. That is, whatever these products are, their prices are the same, they're fixed in Romania. So, if at C, we see an increased quantity demanded because of price decreasing, when we express this within the Romanian uh, economy using the Romanian lu, well then we have to say at the same price, we have a new quantity demanded, which means we see a shift of the demand curve. The demand curve I've labeled uh, demand for exports, one and two. So now, instead of this box decreasing like it would here, what we're gonna see is at the same price, Instead of multiplying it by this number and getting that rectangle, we're going to multiply it by this larger number and get this larger rectangle. So what that means is that exports, even though it looks like they would decrease, in Romanian terms, they'll actually increase. The result of all that is going to be, yes, this will increase, but only by a little bit, as shown by the dotted lines. And X will also be, uh, increase, and it's going to increase by a more substantial amount, as shown by the dotted lines, which means that while it might still be a current account deficit, the amount of the current account deficit has been reduced. And that's the original statement or the original uh, idea that the Marshall Lerner condition is after. So these were greater than one when added together, and we see that the difference between those two is less than what it was before.